this video is going to walk you through working on part three of chapter five in your Unreal Engine 4 Shaders and Effect cookbook. We're going to set up a CCTV camera feed so that there'll be a camera in the scene that's going to rotate back and forth and what it sees is going to be projected onto this TV already in the scene. So before we jump into making the camera itself, I do want to make a couple um, extra extra materials in our um, content folder that we're going to need later. So make sure that you do go ahead and open up the correct map and save it out into your folder. And um, if you are uh, working in one single project for all the different maps, maybe create a new folder to store all of this in since it is going to start getting kind of crowded in your um, content folder. So the first thing I'm going to make is I'm going to make um, a render target. So I'm just going to right click underneath um, media, let's see, media and textures. It's this render target right here. And I'm going to rename this RT underscore webcam. so that um, we have this. The other thing I'm going to go ahead and do, and if you are following along in the book, they don't do this until later, but I kind of want to just go ahead and get it out of the, out of the way so we don't have to jump back and forth um, later on, is I'm going to make a new material. Just right click material. I'm going to call this one M underscore TV underscore webcam display. And we're going to end up putting this on our TV so that we can um, ch change out what is being displayed on the TV to our camera. So I'm just going to double click to go into the material. And this is a very simple material. All we need to do is drag that RT, the render target web webcam that we just made, into here and hook up. Um, this texture sample, the RGB, into our emissive map, which is right there, the emissive color. And that's it. Very simple. We're going to hit apply and save it all out. And the last step before we actually jump into creating our CCTV is to select that uh, TV that's in the scene and we're going to replace element zero underneath materials with this new MTV webcam display that we created. So that once we um, actually set this up, uh, we'll be able to see, see everything in there. Okay, so let's actually start creating our blueprint for this. So I am going to um, right click in here and I'm going to choose a blueprint class and make an actor blueprint. I'm going to name this one BP underscore webcam. And I'm going to open it up. So we're going to need to add two components to this. The first one is we're going to add a static mesh component. So I'm just going to click the drop down and I'm going to find static mesh. And that's fine, we can just keep it that. Um, the other thing we need to add is a um, scene capture component 2D. So I'm going to do the drop down and I'm going to start typing scene. And then it should pop up here the scene capture 2D component. And you should get your camera there. We do want to make that static mesh our root, so I'm going to grab it and drag and drop it onto that default scene root so that it becomes our first item. So let's actually get our static mesh for the static mesh. With it selected, I'm going to come over to the details panel, and with this drop down, I'm going to locate the um, SM underscore webcam and it should be this static mesh right here. It's a very simple static mesh. It's just like the sphere with a little lens on it, but that's all we need to kind of indicate that this is the camera in our scene. Now 
So next, let's set up that screen scene capture component 2D. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to scroll all the way down until I locate the scene capture right here. And what we want to put here in this texture target is our um, render target that we created the, that first couple steps, that RT underscore webcam, so that we can connect up um, saying that this scene capture component 2D, what it captures is going to go to actually, this, you know, we're going to funnel it through there. The other thing is we do want to make sure that capture every frame is checked as well as capture on movement is checked so that we can get a continuous feed from our camera. The last thing um, we should probably make sure that we do is um, make sure that our uh, scene capture component 2D is facing the correct way because right now the way that it looks is the camera is facing that way but on our actual static mesh it's facing this way so I'm going to make sure to go ahead and rotate this get the correct rotate it and I'm going to move it in a little bit so that we're not accidentally capturing the back of the camera something like that. And if you end up having like a weird feed, um, maybe you can always come in and see if you can adjust this because it's possible that you actually, you know, if it's out too far, you're actually going to see that static mesh. But right about here should probably be, be okay. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to kind of give our static mesh some movement because, you know, we're really not going to be able to tell that this is a live feed because it's currently stationary. So we're going to set up some um, movement so that that webcam does rotate back and forth. So first things first, I'm going to go to my event graph. And we don't need these down here. I'm just going to delete those out. Instead, yeah, we're just going to be working with this event begin play. So what we're going to need is we're going to need a timeline um, node in here so that we can um, control our rotation with that. So I'm going to pull off this wire, type timeline, and I'm going to add a timeline. Um, we could just call this um, like camera, camera movement or something. It's always nice to label these so that we know exactly what we're doing with them. Next, I'm going to double click to open up the curve editor for this. And what we're going to do is we're just going to create rotation values so that um, as the timeline goes, it's going to change how the camera, you know, the, the rotation of the camera. And we can do this with just a simple float since we only need to rotate it in one direction. So I'm going to add a float track and I'm going to change the length of this from five seconds to 10. Let's change this to 10. And the last thing I do want is I'm going to loop it so that it's going to go back and, you know, it's going to look like it's going back and forth constantly. It's not going to just do it once and end. So we're going to need um, two, two uh, I'm sorry, three values. We need one at timeline zero, one at five, and then one again at 10. So I'm just going to click anywhere on this graph and add a key to, to this. And I'm going to change it so the time is at 0. And I'm going to give it a value of 0.25. You know what, while we're at it, I should probably rename this to um, camera rotation, just so it looks a little bit nicer. Okay, so we got our first one at zero. We need another one at five, and honestly, it doesn't matter. Just click anywhere, and we're going to add a key. And then we can just come in and manually type in the time of five with a value of negative 0.25. We're going to need one last value, 
so that we can make it a complete loop at time of 10 and then a value of 0.25 so that uh, if we look at it let's see if I can there we go it starts here it's gonna rotate this way and then rotate back um, and since it's looping it's gonna go back and forth um, it would probably be nice to not have it just be so linear like this so we can um, right click on this and we can auto it choose choose auto let's do this one too auto just so it has like a nice smoother where it's going to start slow it'll speed up it'll slow down start slow speed up and then slow down again it'll it'll look a lot nicer so let's that should be good okay so we're, we're done with this that's all we have to do with this timeline so I'm going to compile and save it and go back to my event graph So we do actually need to hook up this so that it is rotating. Um, first things first, we have to tell it what we're rotating, and we're going to rotate the static mesh. So I'm just going to drag and drop this in here to create a reference to this. And um, we then need to do um, an add relative rotation on our static mesh. So I'm going to just drag a wire, start typing, add, relative rotation which is here and we're going to pull this update into here so that we do um, as this changes we're gonna we're going to rotate this so we do need to make sure that we're only rotating it on the Z axis so I'm going to um, right click on the delta rotation and choose split struct pin so that we can access the X, Y, and Z individually. Um, so, you know, as this updates, we're going to target that static mesh, but we do need to actually put in our camera rotation. This is that F track that we created. So that's why I decided to rename it camera rotation, just so it's easier to find. That's this right here. We want this value to be fed into the Z so that we're just rotating it on the Z axis. You could, you know, experiment around and do these other ones. Um, this would cause it to rotate in different directions, but we just want it to go back and forth. So that's the Z. All right, so that's actually it for the event graph. So let's compile and save it. And let's take a look at what we have. So I do want to note that we don't need to bother doing this to the scene capture component 2D. Since this is a child of the static mesh, if the static mesh rotates, the child does come with it. So we only have to do this once. So keep that keep that in mind. So let's add our webcam now to our scene. So I'm just going to drag and drop it in. And let's kind of position it to a little bit more interesting of a look. And we know it's working because we can see, look, you can see those changes live, so we can see it moving around. But um, I do want to kind of point it maybe at this wall. It'd probably be a little bit more interesting. And if we did it correctly, we should just be able to hit play and watch it. So we can see our webcam is rotating. It's got that nice kind of ease in, ease out animation on it. And we can see what it's seeing on the wall. So that's it for this video. Um, if you have any issues, uh, most likely if you were following along with the book, um, I did some of the work with setting up that material first on the on the TV. So make sure that you are aware of that. that I did that first uh, before we went in and do, did the blueprint.